Hey, what's going on, guys? SmartHelping.com here. Uh, I'm Jay, and we have an inventory management spreadsheet built. Uh, it's in Google Sheets exclusively, so you will have to have a free Gmail account to use it. And um, when you download it, note you will have to hit File and make a copy for your own editable version. The cost is a one-time fee of $45. If we go into, uh, let's just start with the instructions. Um, so you hit file, make a copy, only blue text is editable. You want to clear out all initial data that's in blue text. And to do that, you want to hit edit, and, you know, highlight the cells to delete, hit edit, delete, and delete values. Uh, don't mess with any of, the, any of the formula columns that'll be labeled. And um, you can also enter beginning balances. So, and I'll go through all of that. Uh, so first off, list tab. You can enter all your unique SKUs here. There's no limit to SKUs. You can enter uh, safety stock for all of these. You can also enter any amount of locations. This is a formula based on the database that's going to add um, essentially all of the add transactions and deplete transa transactions to show you the current inventory balance by SKU. And that will be a lookup that then pulls back to the uh, database tab. Uh, so you, you're entering your unique uh, SKUs and locations here. That data is going to be then able to be populated in these drop downs. Uh, to enter an actual transaction, you just go to the, uh, hit the date, hit the expiration date if necessary. I'll talk more about that later. Uh, hit the location, the SKU, if it's an add or a deplete, the number of units and the total cost. Obviously on uh, deplete, there's you don't need to enter a cost, but for the add add transactions you do need to put a cost and that's it everything else is automated um, these are just automated rows for price per unit days until expiry if, if applicable you can also see the current uh, unit count of inventory per location and in total in these two columns and then you, it'll show safety stock and you can actually see if you're um, below the safety stock and it'll automatically show in red for that row and those will start up. Those will update automatically when you select a location in a SKU. I've also put eight extra fields here. That's going to be another important part, uh, just for general tracking. If you're going to do expirations, you might want to put labels in here that will help you filter and, and tabulate the data, uh, or whatever. There could be all kinds of reasons. So I just made sure there was a good amount of extra fields in here uh, for each item. So that's the basic structure. You enter the inventory, uh, add or deplete, units, cost, um, the location, SKU, and the date. Uh, now, based on all that information, the first automated report is showing you uh, the units total added, depleted, and the current stock available by location. And then you can select different SKUs, and that will all, all update. So this is just a report on a given individual SKU. I'll get to more advanced reporting on the next tab. Um, also for value of inventory, the way I'm doing that is you can select the date range to account for cost basis, and it will calculate the weighted average cost of any buy transactions in that period and apply that cost per unit to all the existing inventory. If we go to inventory view all, this will show you now, instead of just um, having a drop down for SKU, it will show all existing SKUs and all existing locations and you can enter or not enter you will see automatically reported the total balance of each SKU at each location and this goes across if you want to do more more locations you can just add columns and drag the formulas over uh, and it's built right now i think for yeah for 500 uh, SKUs. but again that can easily be um, you can add as many rows as you want and just drag all the formulas down and over no problem. There's no extra work that's needed and nothing would break in that case. It's just um, just dragging formulas. And to drag formulas, you just can highlight and you hit the little box in the bottom right and drag it either down or over. So this also shows the total inventory value at each location. So that's just a sum product uh, formula. So it's saying warehouse, the total value of all the SKUs at that location based on um, the weighted average cost per unit is 976 in this case. And then it also so shows you the total value, inventory value of each SKU across all locations. 
and the total value of all your inventory across all locations in the SKUs right here. And this auto updates as the database updates. So it's a pretty nice tracker. Um, so now let's get into expirations. So uh, actually, before I get into this, let's talk about um, starting balances. So you're probably an ongoing operation and you want to keep track of how much inventory is it, you might have inventory right now at locations. To do that, you just do an add transaction and pick the SKU and the location and just mark if it's uh, the number of units and mark it as an add. You can do that one time for every uh, location SKU combination that exists right now for inventory balances. And then that will then give you the correct balance. And you can put the cost basis for that that exists. And then um, as you have more individual inventory transactions that affect those locations, you can start adding them and that will give you an accurate inventory balance of all your inventory existing and new items or new changes to it that happen. Uh, that was the easiest way I could find to handle starting balances and then use this as an evergreen tool. For example, you could track everything for a year. Um, and then you can make a copy of the sheet for the next year. And then for that sheet, just simply enter your initial balances. And then you can start over uh, by doing new stuff. Uh, so you can use a, a workbook for each year, depending on how much data you have. Or you could just do one uh, database tab and just track it perpetually. Uh, it just depends on how many rows you're going to have. And if you get up to like, you know, 50, 60,000 rows, uh, you'll probably have to start doing workbooks for uh, a workbook for each year. But the, the template can handle that. Again, you just do add transactions to start off the beginning balance, and then you could do transactions that affect that. <clears throat> okay, so that's that. Uh, expirations. So here you can put an expiry. Let's say you're buying a batch of something and you know it expires on a given date. The days until expiry formula is an automated formula. It'll show the days until that date is happening compared to the current date. And then that, on the expirations tab, you can report and show anything. Let's say I put this to um, expires within X days, 10. Well, this is expiring within five, so it shows up. If I said anything expiring with four or, or less days, it would not show up. So you can see how that works. And then you can see the batch, when it was purchased, the expiration date, and how many days until it expires then this is where the extra fields might come in handy because you also need to put on here. So if you buy something and then you start selling off that batch, you need to mark every time you sell from that batch, and you'd probably do that in an extra field. And then you can see on the expirations tab, it'll um, you put the date of expiry for those batches when they're sold as well. And you can see um, how much of that batch remains. And then if you don't want anything to show in here because you know a batch has been fully sold out, you simply go back to the database and just clear out, like you can clear this out. And if you do that, the data will no longer show in expirations. So that's how you manage uh, that. And it, that's a, a, a more granular use case, but I felt like it was broad enough that I should put it in here and it's not that disruptive uh, to anything else. It doesn't really, if you don't have expirations or don't need to worry about that, you can clear that out. It's fine. Uh, so that's expirations, low stock. This is just a, a general filter formula that's looking at any SKU where the balance is, uh, of the inventory units is below the safety stock, and it'll just list all those SKUs out here. And these are listing the across all locations. Uh, and then total sales. This is if um, I did build a third type of entry in column E here. So you can put sold, and that's just a track if you want to show if you want to see by SKU and by location, how many units have you sold? Because the database just tracks entries and exits of a get for, for the locations. But if you then want to see, well, what have I sold in at each location per SKU, then every time you sell something, you would do a new row item of a sale, mark this as sold, and then that data will then come in here and it'll show you total units sold um, based on all the existing data in the database for the period. All right, and that's everything for this Google Sheet inventory management tool. I believe it covers 95% of cases. Anybody that's tracking inventory, this is a great tool to use. It's very simple. It's hard to break. It's structured um, efficiently. It's using the best formulas. Uh, 
it's it's just a really nice small business tool for um, just tightening up your inventory management and and uh, that's all I got for you the link will be in the description box below uh, so check it out and I'll also list it on some vendor sites and I'll see you guys on the next one